When you were growing up in Norway, did you ever think, oh, I might play a big venue like this? No, I never thought I was going to play venues this size. I never thought I was going to play venues at all, actually. How old are you? 24. And selling out Barclays in Brooklyn. Is this the biggest show you've ever done? Yeah. And I sold out. <laughs> Calcutt does things his own way, very unique um, character. The American attitude historically has always been they want to see the singer get up and sing. But this is something else. This is more like Mozart and Bach. This is the composer composing. It's been a lot of challenges like the last two years because it's like when things go so fast. Still, 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 still. Go time! It's like hard for us to keep up from time to time. Who are you? Let's go! We're about to talk to a musician who quit his economics degree to go on to make history. Fastest artist to reach one billion plays on Spotify. They're calling you the next EDM superstar. If you look at Kygo's statistics, Kygo isn't EDM at all. He found his own thing, his own sound. Go the ball again. Han had a fantastic goal, yeah. Kygo! Norwegian dance DJ Kygo. Well, you said Kygo, but we've discovered that you can say either. You kind of flipped the music industry upside down. It used to be that people had album after album, then they'd sell out a place in New York City. How do you think you've changed the equation? I think it's fun when people say yes, a tropical sound. And um, I, <laughs> if, you, if you know Bergen, it's not very tropical. It's, uh, it's not freezing, but it's very often quite humid and uh, raining. We don't have any palm trees, so where does that tropical sound come from? I have no idea where it comes from. This piano here is, um, I bought it in the military from some guy for a very cheap sum. We fixed it up and it's been standing at uh, Shiru's home since uh, he was a small kid. It's obviously not good enough for him, but he plays it quite often. And he's been playing this piano since he was uh, three, four years old. He has always been interested or, uh, in music, but especially playing the piano. He just plays and plays and plays. If you don't tell him it's dinner, he will keep playing. And uh, that's how we... He became very proficient. He's always been playing at family parties and things and all. Everybody thought it was very cute. This little boy to sit and play songs for us. He's not been very outwardly, he's been a little bit shy, but um, he did it. That time, of course, we didn't think about how it is today. It's impossible. I'm very proud uh, because he gives so much joy and happiness to all his fans. When it fills up with all the, the people, it's, uh, it's breathtaking. I think Kygo is, um, you know, he's already an artist that created an own, his own sound, built his own culture, almost his own movement in a way. There's no stopping where that's gonna go. I try to do everything in my power to sign Kygo. What do I look for when I sign an artist? I look for something unique and different. There's no cookie cutter way. But one sure fast way is sit in a room and feel that the molecules are changing in the room when that artist comes in. I love it, I fucking love it. Yeah, I said 10, 15 people. I want a display presentation. Make sure we have a display presentation with bottles. I told me like Dom, Dom, and I need 42 with the guy. Okay, let's go. Let's go! Yeah. It's a learning process for me, and it's a learning process for Miles, and it's a lot of things that we learned in the last two years. Did you see it? Yeah. Did you see it? I'm from the mid to fucking 12,000 people. You guys, I'm gonna warn you, if I get a phone call, I gotta take it. Yeah, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with, I just got Artelli confirms. What do you guys think of that? This is fucking incredible, dude. It's fucking incredible, that's the type of shit I like to do. What do you, mic me up, let's go. We had built more and more and more and more hype. 
and then like suddenly like yeah we're doing like sold out tours and it's a big team now it's like it's not me and Miles. Yeah, Thomas. Want to go say hi? Hey, hey good to see you, man. What's up, yeah. going on? Good to see you. What's up, man? How are you, dude? Nice to see you. How's it been? Oh, good to see you, man. This guy right here. This is the legend, OK? Thomas Jack. Yeah. There's some new songs. Uh, all hits. All, all hits. hits. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Miles likes, right? Yeah, man. Whoa. That radio hits, play, hits, you know? What do you mean? Radio, radio. No, no underground. We're on Journey, baby. Oh, yeah, underground. Yeah. I coined the term Tropical House. Kaga was the one that uh, made it big, you know, and made it, like, to the the global level, you know. Tropical House emerged as a genre because we're in a place in electronic music where a lot of different sounds are being created and subcultures are more prominent than they were before. I feel like Tropical House is part of this new era of discovery, of people finding out about music and sharing it, and it's part of the streaming culture that, that we're in right now. I never thought of my own tracks as Tropical House. Everybody else just classified it as Tropical House. The question is, what actually is Tropical House, you know? Because I don't really know. It's just like, you know, it has to, it gives off a certain vibe and that's what makes it Tropical House, you know? There's not like a great definitive uh, explanation of what it is, you know? Yeah, it's that, I think. So I'm so hungover as well, dude. No. So it's like, <laughs> like struggling so hard, but yeah. I think, um, well, it's, it's the end is, hang on, so what's the question again? When I think of Tropical House, I think more vibey, more almost sexy too. Like, it's not so pumpy, it's just very smooth and you can just kind of groove to it more than you can, like, duh, you know what I mean? And it's actually awesome because a lot of the, the track is chord based, so it leaves it a lot more open for you to be able to write and do melodies and lyrics and you can range it from anywhere and it, there's not a lot of juxtaposition where you have this like crazy pumpy beat with this like beautiful song it's like everything just feels really cohesive and like they're supposed to be together in this like perfect bubble this melodic or tropical house sound, whatever you want to call it, is super fresh and electronic dance music has been popular for a few years now and it's been getting louder and louder and faster and faster and harder and harder all the time and it's been all about the big drops and bass lines and stuff and I think people were kind of looking for something new so what we did with this genre is stripping it down to very few elements, making it more melodic way slower as well, so it's more chilled, laid back kind of vibe. It just makes you happy. You listen to it, it makes you feel good. It's very musical. Guy goes stuff, there's so much emotion in the vocal, the lyrics are good, and he's just genius with his chord progressions and his melodies. You, you hear the melody one time, and it's stuck in your head for the rest of the week. The style of music is just like, the reason why it has like such a wide like appeal to people is just that it fits so many different settings. At the start, it was just like us making music and putting it on SoundCloud, you know? So it was pretty crazy how now it's like, this is crazy, you know? I didn't realize when I started making this music, I never thought I was gonna play in a club because I felt like the music was more like a kind of a festival music where people were just like sitting on the grass, like having a beer maybe. People want the experience that sort of those, you know, the BPM, excitement, and the kind of rush of music. He's, he's about songs, melodies, and words, which is not so usual in the area that he occupies. I never thought like people were gonna like jump up and down and crowd surf to my music. So I remember I was just like very surprised by, by the response. <laughs> I think it's quite an obvious step for pop artists to kind of grab this trend just because it's been getting so huge. And pop singers also have to stay fresh all the time with their productions and try out new things. It's like so many people are doing it, you know, now. When everyone does something, you know, everyone's oversaturated with the same sound, so people get over it, you know. It's just, it's gone so uh, radio mainstream now that it's like, I don't think Tropical House is dead yet. 
but um, it just depends what artists in the next year are gonna try and do to the genre, you know? And it's always just being ahead of the game. To sustain your career as an artist, you always have to think two steps ahead of your own music. You have to really depend on your existing fan base and being able to be the Pied Piper and make sure that they're going with you in your adventure. And let them know that this is an adventure. It's, it's progress, it's change and there will be change. I always see like Kygo in the same sentence as Tropical House. And I guess I, I'm not trying to like just go away from Tropical House, but I'm trying like to show people that I have more than just Tropical House music. He's talented. Talented as fuck. With this new era of like DJs and EDM, it's definitely a new era of people that comes from a different background than the real musicians was like back in the days. Like I think Kaigo has more the same as the old musicians. It's like he's been on the piano for like ever, you know. Uh, can you ever say if anyone is going to be that successful? Uh, I think it's been a surprise to all of us. Uh, not because it's him, but you know it's happened so fast and it's been so massive. He is very easy going about it. He's very relaxed about it. It's pretty amazing for any artist to be able to fill a venue of the size of Barclays uh, on his own. It's difficult for us to judge what he's doing now because we're not in the business. We do other work, or other jobs in our daily lives. But you know, when you come to a venue like that and you see the sparkle in the eye and the excitement of both Shira and Miles, you really realize that this is something big. Hi, I was just at the concert. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name's Kiana. Yeah, it was fun. I'm, I'm an I, aspiring DJ. Okay, I that's cool. I follow you on Twitter. Awesome. And I'm, I strive in producing on one day. Sometimes people come to me, my friends and colleagues and other people, oh, aren't you proud of your son? Of course I am. But uh, I tell them the thing I'm most proud of is that he is that guy he is. Humble, kind, and down to the earth, that is the thing that is most important for me. That he is Kira. He is a, a good guy. Yeah, keep on going. And maybe learn how to play an instrument. Do you play an instrument? No, not That's yet. very help helpful if you want to start producing. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, get some drink. Get some drink. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. World Tour, Cloud9. Swag? Let's go to the fucking bus. I think the first time we met Miles, we thought he was uh, from a different world, actually, more or less. I don't think we could believe this was possible. He was even younger than, uh, than Shira. We were impressed. He is a, a very, yeah, sometimes we call it a very American type of person. He's very outwardly, very outspoken. Um, Shira and him are more or less completely different. They are complementary. Uh, they function obviously very well together. But um, in the beginning, of course, we, I thought, you know, yeah, let them try and see what happens. Miles had good connections. And uh, I also have learned that Miles never gives up. You know, at the time I was, I think I just was about turning 20. I had, you know, no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I was just a kid in college who wanted to be involved in music. And uh, I wanted to do whatever it took uh, to make it happen. I was actually in my college dorm and I always like check music, I'm always on SoundCloud and my artist Thomas Jack was actually like, yo dude, you gotta check out this guy, like this guy's incredible. The first impact Kygo made was doing these bootlegs, doing these, um, these Kygo mixes of other tracks, so Ed Sheeran being the greatest example of that. The first thing I thought when I heard Kygo was, this is genius, this is what Avicii should have done next. I was already in love with it, I loved it so much. I was already typing away on Facebook saying, I gotta have this guy, I gotta have this guy. So when I reached out to Kygo uh, about almost three years ago, I hit him up on Facebook and I, uh, I said, dude, I, I believe in your music so much, I want to manage you. And uh, luckily, he actually said yes. It's okay, I know you see where you love me. It's okay. Secretly, very secretly. Like deep, like all the way, like really deep down. <sighs> oh my God, I remember his first show like it was yesterday. He played uh, in Paris. The building is a famous building called Moulin Rouge, and inside of that, it's called La Machine. The venue's probably about you know, 250 people, very, very small. This is about, it's the first time I ever met him, was for his first show. So it was sort of 
it was a big thing. I mean, I've been talking to him for eight months over Skype every single day, like game planning, you know, songs were growing. You know, we were really, something was really starting to build up. Three years ago, we were listening to a lot of German Deep House, but German Deep House is always the same rhythmic. And uh, when you got sometimes uh, other music coming on YouTube, I heard something different. It was a track of Kaigo, I See Fire, and it was really different from all the other things I have listened to before. We were looking for something really different at the moment. We are really focusing outside from Paris to bring those artists at the first time in Paris. And um, I began to speak to Kaigo on Facebook then because I love this music, something was really inspiring and uh, really happy music. And uh, we keep contact. I was uh, each time uh, congratulating him about the track because each new track was a success and uh, I was really happy and uh, I was really convinced each time more to make him play in Paris because you got a lot of artists who, who did one track or two tracks and it's a success, but all these tracks are, are really uh, amazing. And uh, I was really be behind my computer and uh, come to Paris, but I think it's uh, also um, a choice because it's better to wait when you're ready to do something really proper than uh, do uh, something bad. And I think it was the perfect and the right time to, to make him play. Uh, we're in Paris right now, we're about to go to uh, do this first ever show and it's a crazy thing it's only been, you know, it's only been 20 for over two years now, so it's pretty crazy here, guy. Back where we first met. Yeah, oh yeah, we first, we met, first, met, in met, we first uh, met in Paris. Our first sort of, date. Our first date was in Paris. It's so crazy. Yeah, all the feelings yeah. are coming back. I'm in love again. <laughs> That's the first photo I posted on my Instagram, I think. Oh, here we are. Really? Yeah. Photo from January 2014. Wow. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, Alright, let's go fuck shit up. So we're outside, we're in front of the Moulin Rouge. Ooh. Are you gonna exact same photo? Yeah, we got the same photo. This is where all the magic began. Oh my god, it smells the exact same way. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's the main room. We weren't F big enough F to play there. No, FKJ was playing. Yeah, he actually oh did play there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> That's it. But we yeah, we came down that way though. But it's just, Yeah. Uh, you gotta get back up there. <laughs> so we show up to the venue, I, I, this is crazy, literally there's zero people there. Like zero. This was exactly how many people there was in the dance floor <laughs> when I started. Kaigo's first ever show, and there's only two people in the room, it was me and me. <laughs> I thought like this is, this is perfect, because this is like now I can like start like with just a couple of people in the room and I can have like a nice quiet like first gig. I'm like this better, this room better fill the fuck up. <laughs> and... And it did. I think I started my set with the Icy Fire remix, and people came like running down the stairs, and it like it filled up pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. So I didn't get the quiet, nice first gig that I was. And I thought I was. I think you were comfortable, was, right? I think you like <laughs> once I, the room goes up, you're, you're happy. Yeah, you're happy. Yeah, I was happy, though. but I was like yeah. nervous, and yeah. it was kind of like a new experience for me, like too have like a full dance for everybody. It was, they wasn't like, they wasn't just like dancing, they were looking at me and they were like expecting me to do something. I was like, oh yeah, I was like sure what to do. The first gig was uh, a 400 club capacity and it was really close to the people and uh, I think he got this kind of, uh, he's really nice and uh, he was really enjoying the music, he got his passion, the smile and uh, his music is really happy. People were dancing like uh, it was a kind of Woodstock thing. And uh, it was really, um, we do, we did a lot of events, but when you saw all the smile on, on the people's face and they are at the time when the Kaigo was playing, it's the stuff you don't see uh, uh, every time. The crowd surfing. Yeah, the crowd yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. 200 people? Yeah, 250. 150. Yeah, 150. 
It was crazy. Yeah. In the beginning, like there wasn't that many show offers. Like we didn't know what to this, look for. <laughs> yeah. And this guy that, that booked me was the first to ever reach out to me. So I remember he actually like tried to book me six months before I actually played. But at that time, I didn't know how to DJ, so I had to say no because I I wasn't comfortable doing a show. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely got another show here. Where are we gonna have the fireworks then? I got an opportunity in March where uh, somebody from Coldplay, uh, his team reached out to me. I said, listen, we gotta do this. We do the remix, he gets it done in a month. This is the first time he's ever had a deadline. The record label came back to me saying, um, we're not sure this is gonna come out. So at the time, uh, Pete Tonk, who was, you know, I was becoming friends with, now he's one of my closer friends, but I was, I was still becoming close with, uh, I reached out to him, I, he, his label was involved with the remix, and I said, listen, I gotta get this remix out. I gotta, gotta, I gotta get this out there. Like, I can't go back to my client and tell him it's not happening. I said, you should do a premiere of this song, a worldwide debut of this song, and I guarantee you, Coldplay and their team are gonna see how crazy this is, and they're gonna, they're gonna want it. I run a label, and, and I'm involved on the a &R side of a, of a big agency with, with um, William Morris IMG. It was one of the biggest kind of A&R chases, um, and, and signing chases in electronic music for a long time. You know, I was, I was well aware of what Kyra was doing. I was in touch with Miles on a daily basis. T Tong, BBC Radio One. Kicking off the Wonderments, then here's a world exclusive, brand new uh, Kygo remix. Here's his new version of Midnight from Coldplay. <laughs> so I go back to Kira. I tell him, I say, listen, good news. Excited for the last show. It's good to end it here in uh, London. No, I think the, you know, the big, big thing about his career was really, um, you know, taking that SoundCloud following and then converting it into a serious, um, the impact he had on Spotify. He's really, you know, I think, I'm sure you're aware he's the fastest artist to get to a billion streams ever uh, from a streaming standpoint, which is a huge figure. Um, and it's, what's exciting as well is that's global in nature. It's not just a, a couple of markets. We're seeing it in every market around the world. One of the reasons why you're seeing artists from Sweden and Norway these days travel the world, I think probably at a, more at a rate greater than ever before is simply because Spotify is so big in the Nordics. It obviously started in Sweden, and so uh, playlists are global in nature, and those charts on Spotify are global in nature, and so, you know, smaller countries in Scandinavia, well, because they have so many Spotify users, can really push things up those charts faster than ever before, and people from other markets can now see them and access them, you know, in a way that, you know, they've never were able to in the past. And so you're starting to see things spread and travel, particularly from that region, so much faster as a result of that. Yeah, right place, right time, and, and one of their own, you know, with, with the right sound, right demographic, right kind of, just joined all the dots together. Deb Mouse was the first superstar to, to come from Beatport, and there's no question that Kygo was the first superstar to come. Not only dance, electronic superstar, but probably the first true superstar act to come from Spotify. I think streaming and YouTube offer um, a beautiful sense of discovery, as well as shareability. It allows your cell phone to be the largest record store in the world. It's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous and nice. I saw the insane opportunities of Spotify and YouTube because consumers loved it. Fans loved it. And I thought, boy, this is such a great experience for the consumer that this is going to be the way that the business restores its value. And Kygo just tapped into it. In the last year, there's been a transition for myself. I started thinking outside of just these large shows and how my music is effective in these large shows, but how it's effective 
in the streaming world, a world that I don't actually tangibly physically connect with and see. If you think um, in, in the scope of what uh, uh, like an artist like Kygo is doing where he's reaching over a billion streams, you're not just playing in front of 10, 15,000 people at Barclays, you're playing in front of millions. You just don't really see it happening. And it's happening at any time of the day worldwide. Ready? The song's blowing up in Scandinavia. Have you noticed that? Which one? You know we have five songs, top 20 in Norway? I know, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it really is. I'm from Estonia and I'm, I came all the way to London just to see Kygo. I absolutely love Kygo. Talk about the atmosphere. It's like, this is music is amazing. Clearly. But it's the atmosphere he creates. And I mean, those bracelets, they make like a massive difference. Everyone like moving the bracelets around. So we came from Cardiff today, we travelled home about what was it? 2, 2 p.m. just for Kygo. Why did we decide to come? Because his music's so good, it's like relaxing but it's also gets you hyped at the same time. Fantastic, had a great night. It's definitely like, yeah, it's, it was a big step for me. Like these two years it's just been like, taking like bigger and bigger and bigger steps. And like I started like, it was a big step for me to just play like the first venue with 200, 200 people. And then like the venues got bigger and bigger and suddenly it was a thousand people and it was two thousand and ten thousand. And then yeah, Barclays playing the piano, like if you told me that five years ago, I'd probably say like that's never gonna happen. Like if it was just me, I would probably never book Barclays and think that I'm gonna sell out Barclays. So I guess that's uh, that's where like the, the teamwork comes in. That's where it's it's good to have a crazy manager. So well, I got one last question. What do you think about this crazy 22-year-old manager? <laughs> do you want me to do this off the record or on the record? <laughs> um, do, you, do, do you know what? Both off the record and on the record. Um, Mal Shear, um, after 22 years in the industry, just when you thought you'd seen it all, someone like Miles comes along. And one thing which uh, really struck me about Miles was his energy and the way he compliments Kygo. Kygo's very relaxed, chilled out. Miles is very energetic, go-getter, thriving to push things forward. The two of them together is, is a fantastic combination. Um, I think it's a, f a formidable partnership. Kygo is very positive and calm, almost soothing. There's something very calming if you're in Kygo's presence. Miles, on the other hand, is uh, completely the opposite, wanting to succeed and wanting it now. You always got a job. So somehow the two of them teaming up has been really helpful for, you know, getting the project accelerated. Showtime. I'm so excited. That was great. I love you, Simon. Ryan, yeah. There's a typical philosophy with artists, which is that as you grow them live, you grow them in stages. You go from baby steps to walking, and from walking to a trot, and from a trot to a canter, and then to a gallop. Somehow, from seeing Kygo in New York at a bowling alley in Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bowl, capacity a thousand people, Miles one day turns around and says to me, we're gonna play Barclays Center. Best water they make. Thank you. Hey. I'm like, you sure about that? That's a big capacity. That's 15,000 capacity gig. That's a massive gig. And, you know, there's obviously venues like Terminal 5, you know, that's 3,500. You can go in there, do two nights, three nights, four nights very safe, but nothing like the dramatic impact of, of uh, Barclay Center. And that's really where I have to give it to Miles in terms of the uh, Svengali-ness that he would have the, the balls to go and put Barclay Center on sale. This is a big thing picking this venue because this was the next move. Like, I want to make a statement in America. I want to show these radio programmers. I want to show everyone that this act is here to stay and that the streaming, that everything that we've been doing can cause an effect like this. You know, it's so crazy to think that you know, two years ago, we went from 250 tickets in Paris to over 13,000 tickets. And this isn't just like, you know, GA standing. You know, people are buying seats. People are all the way up in the bleachers. They're, this is a whole next level, and Barclays is just like, I've been stressed about this forever. Alex doesn't want to do the show tonight. He doesn't want to do the show. He's not, he, I don't see him. I guess not. I heard you weren't there for the drop. What, what's... I don't care. We don't hold it. You gotta fucking like, come on. Who the fuck made that play? Man, it's not that. 
No, the plan is for the drop when it goes full on the floor. The kick comes in, the thing goes down. You trying to change my game plan? Shut the fuck up, that's what I'm saying. We're not doing that. I'm just asking. Is it, you talking to Sean? Man. I'm just trying to deal with all of that. I'm trying to bring energy to everybody. Because I feel like if you bring energy to everybody in the crew, then everyone gets more excited and they get more into it. And the more everyone's into it, the better show you have. As we like, when we grow, you know, if we do this in the future, it's like it's got to be more prepared. It's just tough. We got, tw we got two hours. We're going to go like that. So we're doing the intro now, right? we just done a week of rehearsals. We played a show on the West Coast and then had five days between that show and New York. So we were totally out of sync. We hadn't hit our routine yet and went in for the biggest show with even more gags, even more crew, even more production. It was the craziest four or five months of planning. We have a string section, piano moments. He's coming down like literally on a scissor lift. The kabuki, all the confetti, the lasers, the pyro, 15,000 people. So we're getting rid of the projector behind the front of the house. I want to put a VIP riser for all of our VIPs to go there. That's a problem. It definitely ran through my head that it was not going to work out. What happened to your shoes? I lost it. It was, it was, it was slowing me down. We were running very far behind, and it, it did cross my mind that we might not be ready for doors. I guess this one's the biggest thing he's ever done. Nervous, anxious, this is the biggest show of your career. I feel prepared and that's like, if you, if you feel prepared, you're, that takes away the nervousness. As the critics all roll down, crying, crying, no one playing to a full house, house. No heroes, villains, no one to blame. Why would it, will this fill the stage and the thrill? The thrill is gone. Our debut was a masterpiece, but in the end, for you and me, know the show it can't go on. Brooklyn, how you feeling? 
singing songs that I really didn't connect to and you get to a point like now where it's like I've never gotten tired of singing this song and I've sang it so many places all over the world. I haven't done something that I'm so proud of at home yet so I, I, I used to live next door to here and I watched this place get built. I went to a vocal coach like down the street watching this place get built so now I'm in here and it's like I don't know it's probably going to be the most rewarding experience that I've experienced so far. At least we stole the show. Darling, darling, you know that we are sold out and kisses fading. But the band plays on now, we're crying, crying. So let the velvet roll down. Down, uh, there's no heroes, villains, want to blame. While wilted roses fill the stage and the thrill, the thrill is gone. Our debut was a masterpiece Our lines we read so perfectly But the show, it can't go on I know you know the word We used to have it all Oh, 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 oh And wave out to the crowd And take our final back Oh, it's our time to go But at least we stole the show Barclays, New York City, this is my fucking home. I want you to scream. We stole the show. We stole the show. We stole the show. Come on, come on. At least we stole the show. Oh, at least we stole the show. Oh, we stole the show. Oh, we stole the show. New York City, you stole the fucking show. Make some noise for Carson James. New York, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. You happy? Happy? I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy, yeah, yeah. If you're happy. I'm gonna go home and change. I'll see you in a yep. little. Okay, we're gonna sound check Shaggy now. What's up, guys? Hey, man. Yeah, <laughs> Karen, nice to meet you, man. We thought, like, if you wanna, like, do, I don't know, just to do something on top of the sexual healing one. Let me hear it. Okay. So, this will be the introduction into, it wasn't male. So what you could do, if you want to do that, because if you want me to sing Bombastic over that, it can be done. That, that, cool, that yeah. could be That's really cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, it yeah, can be done. Yeah. yeah, is it and, all right speed? Then, yeah, and then if you want, right where you stop, if you want us to do, then we're going to, it wasn't me. Yeah. That's what we should do. That could work. Because that, that kind of ties it all up then. Yeah. That's, it's that. doable. Yeah, is it? I mean, yeah, key-wise it works. Yeah? You come on and then it's in another. Yeah, yeah. Lover, lover, sexy undercover. Mm. She lover, lover. She's semi bombastic, semi fantastic. Nice. 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 Nice.
They can't deny numbers. The institution cannot deny numbers. You know, so that's, just, that's the one thing about Kygo is that he's more of like the people's choice. He's, he's like a people's choice versus like uh, an industry choice. And now he's both. Kygo is selling a Barclays Center, not a proof that he's so much bigger than, than EDM. He doesn't need the term EDM to be attached to him. He's, he's Kygo. Well, he's a, he's a pop star now, and he's, he's streaming the kind of numbers where he's, he can be compared to, you know, the biggest acts on the planet. So therefore, he's kind of got to do the same things as those acts, which is keep making great records and, and keep playing great shows, because he's, he's closer to Drake than he is to the next underground dance act. The genie's out the bottle. He's, he's, he's growing up time. <laughs> I'm a flame, you're the fire, the dark in me. the computer in front of the studio like that's 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 in my comfort zone like like after that first show I felt like okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this and then they're just gonna go all in I'm super nervous but it's just like I just you just gotta do it you have to get out there and you have to like play shows and you have to get your music out there I don't want to be old and regret 
that I didn't do a lot of stuff when I was younger. I, I, I'd rather want to do it than regret that I did it instead of forget that I didn't do it. New York City looks like this shit up! Strangers in the night Oh no, here we are To come together To the one Let's testify Our hearts alive Fire stone When they strike You feel the light Sparks so fly Passing by, and they'll be wasting 